Hey guys, on YouTube, I got some questions about the CQ equalizer review. In there, I was doing some audio testing stuff. Uh, basically, I just did a null test, proved that there was some sort of difference. And more specifically on the CQ plugin, Mr. Barney J. Stinson said that adding something is DC offset. It's even there when you stop, definitely a bug. Let's look at some of the plugins that you would use if you're doing some sort of testing. A couple of them would be the JS Frequency Spectrum Analyzer and the Oscilloscope. Some other things that you'll find useful are the Sweep Generator and the Tone Generator. You can also use White Noise and Pink Noise uh, for different types of testing. For this one, we're looking at harmonics, changes in the frequency spectrum. So we're looking at uh, the waveform as well as the frequency spectrum. Another thing that we need for this particular test is the DC filter. A DC filter is just a super steep filter somewhere below 20 hertz, usually does the trick, and it basically makes the waveform more symmetrical. It doesn't have a offset where the waveform isn't centered on the middle line. So again, we're testing this plugin CQ. As Barney J. Stinson said, there is a this hump minus 66 dB at, what is this, 50 hertz. So it's kind of like they've modeled some line noise or something like that. It's not really noise because you can boost this up and you don't see any waveform. So as he said, it's DC offset. So we can just click on the DC filter, turn it on, and the noise goes away. So we got rid of that hump in the low frequencies there, the DC offset. Uh, so now we can test what this is doing for harmonics. So let's put on the tone generator. So I'm going to set this to 1000. This is a 1K tone. It sounds horrible. You're not going to like it. Uh, I'm going to turn down my fader a little bit so it doesn't get too annoying. You have to be careful with this stuff because it's really easy to just crank these tones, make it really loud in your headphones, and then kind of give you a headache. So... Be careful. Turn it on. So first of all, we should turn off uh, CQ. We have this one kilohertz tone at minus 12. Okay. So that's these settings, minus 12 and 1000. So we're seeing a little bit here. This is not to worry about. That is down at minus 110. Don't worry about that. We're going to flip on the plugin and we see Got some rumble stuff down here, but mostly we're looking at minus 60 and minus 84, 85. We've got two harmonics. So 1K tone here, we got a 2K and a 3K. There's second and third harmonics, right? I think everyone gets that, second and third harmonics. It's over 50 dB down and over 70 dB down. Once we start pushing up the drive control, we're going to see in the uh, oscilloscope here, as well as this area here, more harmonics, more of these spikes are going to be coming up, uh, and these ones are going to get louder. The overall level is going to change, but it's, that's kind of the way distortion works as well. So let's turn this up. So right around there, it gets pretty obvious that there's some extra stuff happening there, some distortion. And we're seeing that that first harmonic is now at minus 40. So it's a lot closer. It's gone up 20 dB. And then there's all these other harmonics coming in. So with this plugin, I'm finding that about plus seven, you start to hear the differences. And it's pretty subtle. Let me... Let me reset this. It's at plus zero, and I'm going to bring it up to plus six. Let's see if we can hear the difference there. I think we can. So let's bring this down to plus three. So 
So even there, we're hearing something. I don't think this is quite as noticeable with music, but with a 1K tone, we're definitely hearing this. We can do the same testing at other frequencies. So at 250 hertz, bypassing this. We're hearing a level difference, but we're not hearing those harmonics. We're not seeing anything on the oscilloscope yet. Bump this up. So I'm starting to hear it now. And at this point, we're definitely seeing it in the oscilloscope. At plus 6.8, I'm not hearing the additional harmonics. But anywhere past there, I start to hear it. So that's the tone generator. Something else we can do is the sine sweep generator. Let's pop that out. And I'm also going to use my uh, minus 12 dB dim plugin. This is available through Repack. All the other ones are included with Reaper. And this is just a plugin that I made that does nothing other than turn down the volume by 12 dB. This is right after our tone generators because the sweep generator does not have a volume control. We're going to sweep through the frequency spectrum and see what kind of coloration is happening across all the frequencies. All right, plugin is on, sweep is active. Did you notice right up at the top, there's some foldback aliasing? This plugin actually works differently at different sample rates. Right now I'm at 48 kilohertz. At 96K when I was doing some testing, it was a lot cleaner, but I think it's more interesting to show you the aliasing distortion, the foldback aliasing distortion. Let's listen to it again and it's up kind of at the top of our hearing range. We start hearing lower harmonics coming in. sort of like a weird record scratch sound coming in there. All right, let's do it one more time with the drive control at plus 15. Just for fun, let's crank everything. Everything all the way up. And that's where I'll leave you for today. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope this gives you some ideas for ways to analyze your plugins, the things that are supposed to be giving you saturation, but maybe aren't. Maybe they just have a fancy graphic. These are things that you can do to test your system or your plugins or even hardware. Anyways, it's, it's something that you should know. So thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the website through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.